The rain began on the afternoon of Memorial Day, May 30th, 1989. That night, from 8 to 10 inches of rain fell in the mountains. The streams filled, flooded, and rushed the valleys. By the morning of May 31st, the Kanawha, the in the middle of the mountains, was rising higher and higher, backing up into the woodland streams. At the South Fork Dam, a group of men struggled to clear the debris clogging the spillway, raise the level of the dam, and dig in the spillway. By 11 o'clock, the water level had risen to the top of the dam. The young engineer, John Park, rode to South Fork to telegraph a warning to Johnson. Shortly before noon, the water spilled over the dam. At 2.45 p.m., Johnston received the last of the three telegraphed warnings. The dam is becoming dangerous and may possibly go. The alarm was not spread. At 10 minutes after 3, the dam collapsed. A giant wave of water, a rolling ball with the force of Niagara Falls, roared down the Kamala Valley. George Fisher saved his family. His farmhouse vanished in an instant. At South Fork, Michael, an English coal miner, was the first victim. The water slowed into the sun, and the backwash drove a bridge 200 yards upstream. Most of South Fork, built on a hillside, was spared. Only four people were killed. Below South Fork, the narrow valley compressed the water to a 75-foot wall. At the crossbow, the flood divided. Part of the wave rushed through the railroad cut. Tons of debris piled up the massive system via 75 feet high. The second wave had more timber, rocks, and earth against the stone piers and still the arch. The surging water built up nearly 90 feet to create a third week. For an instant, the flood was stopped. Then, the viaduct collapsed. The water burst toward General Point with explosive force. The pretty small town was wiped clean. Sixteen people died. The flood had become a grinding mass of timbers, trees, rocks, and rails. Houses, bridges, railroad cars moved with it. The weight moved faster at the top at the bottom, continually rolling over itself and crushed anything beneath. Surging against the sun, the water carved a new channel for the river. In his locomotive beside the river, engineer John Hess couldn't see the flood, but he heard it coming. Hess tied down his whistle and went shrieking toward the railroad cars of East Carolina. The whistle gave a little warning anyone had. Hess said of his heroes, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't see what else I could do. Passengers were left from two stranded trains, slipping in the mud, crawling over and under train cars, leaping over and into a ditch. More than 50 people died. Half the town was destroyed, including 40 houses, two hotels, and the railroad station. The force of the flood waters pushed 30 locomotives from 100 yards to a mile downstream. The wave picked up speed through the open valley and struck prosperous trees around Woodvale with no warning, killing 314 people and 89 horses trapped in stable. The wreckage choked torrent, set off trees, crushed houses, and soured the streets, leaving Woodvale mud flat. The Gautier wireworks exploded in clouds of roiling blood steam and added rolls of barbed wire to the monstrous flood. At 4 Ocean, the flood struck Johnson. People first heard the sound, a grinding, rumbling, roaring, and then saw a dark spray, a mass of dust, a black billowing smoke. Survivors called it the death mist. The flood flowed three paths through Johnstown, smashed against Westmont Hill, and hurled the backwash up Stone Creek to destroy Kernville and Roxham. The wind surged back, creating 
into a vicious whirlpool and lodged houses, people, and animals against the stone bridge. The stone bridge held, damaged the flood, and Johnstown became a lick, spreading across thirty acres, ten to thirty feet deep. The water cut through earth and bank and struck Millville and Canberra City in another violent surge. After smashing Canberra City, the waters spread out and lost their destructive force. About 6 p.m., the massive ravaged stone bridge caught fire. For the people trapped there, it became an immense funeral pyre. A day of horrors Houses, factories, and neighborhoods had been destroyed. 27,000 people were homeless. 2,209 men, women, and children were dead.